Gerade ist es Soundcheck. Despite the struggles uh, with a probably broken foot and um, still some kilometers to go, we made it here to Comagena, to Tuln, and um, we're here in front of the Roman Museum in Tuln, where we're going to take a look at what's happening inside. This Roman Museum is located right in the middle of the ancient uh, castrum. The Danube is just a few meters down there. And as in many places, the Danube has uh, eaten away at the northern front of the Castrum. So we are here pretty much in the middle, despite being quite uh, close to the Danube. So let's have a look inside. There's a great new exhibition here. I've been here the last time in 2019 and it's been changed since then. There is now here in the entrance more about the medieval area with something about the monasteries, Relic, relics and also King Rudolf. Here we come to Roman section and we can see a really great reconstruction, 3D reconstruction of Tulln in late antiquity. As you can see here, the camp with the vicus around, fields around, there was about a thousand horses here. Here we see how the camp would have looked like uh, laid over the, the modern city. And there's the Roman Museum. Which is located in an um, old monastery. greater context and we see the, the Austrian section of the Danube Limes where I was walking and the context of Tuln. We see all the stations that I've been walking through already here, Albing, Walsee, Pechlan, Mautern, Treismauer and now we're in Tuln. And ahead of us we still have Zeiselmauer, Greifenstein, Klosterneuburg, Windobona, Equinoctium and then Carnuntum. And here we have the archaeological zone where Professor Ubel was very active. And I've just been talking with the um, mayor, uh, the ex mayor of uh, Tulln, who has been restoring the completely preserved uh, Roman tower, which is located here. This one. This has been restored under Professor Uber, together with the former mayor of the town. You can see a great reconstruction. It didn't have a roof at the time. It's slightly different, but the entire stone structure is completely preserved. There you can see the water, the sea, the waterfront of the castrum, which has been destroyed by the river. Some excavations in the city. There you go. Porta. These animations are really great and valuable. Comagena hosted also a big part of the Danube fleet. So, because we don't know exactly where the port was located, it must have been quite a bigger port and not just this uh, small landing bridge here. 
must have been a bigger structure, but we have unfortunately no archaeological evidence for it, so that's why it's actually missing in this reconstruction. But um, since there was a significant part of the Danube fleet there, you can also see how the river system here looked like. Like it wasn't like just one big river, but like many small rivers, many islands, and you really need those patrol ships for for uh, security uh, in those areas. Many parts where the river can be crossed easily on foot or by horse. And you need to just be sure that there is nothing going on there. That's the main exhibition hall. Some great first century belts here. Some bolts. Some great rests of scale armors. Some of them dated to late antiquity. Here, possibly the end of the third century. There we have a little Here are rests of a bronze statue, probably scrap to be reused. Looks definitely lighter than what I had to carry. Here we have late antiquity. Maybe we can also work on this display and make it a bit more accurate. And here we go. Very nice fibulous, various types. Some early type 2, some type 4. Around fibulas, just creating some a gilded bigger one here, and some very nice capschnitt belts. Here we have some nice plumbata. And signal of the here we have a nice set of fibulas again from late antiquity. These are all some type fours I see here. Really, in, like have been used for a long time. And here, very nice, simple belts. Again, the typical strap ends.
from the Castrum at Canabiaca. I'm quite disappointed, of course, that uh, with this injury, and it seems to be more than just a, a sore foot, um, I, I can impossibly continue to walk. I've tried it, I've walked a little bit today, I've walked yesterday, and I've walked probably with a broken foot all day the day before. And um, yeah, we're, we're just about one day away from Vindobona, and um, I wanted to walk through Vindobona, and of course, wanted to walk all the way to Kanuntum and beyond, but that's not, uh, not advisable anymore. Um, I'm very happy that Beat and Enrique and Rufus the horse are now uh, helping me to at least complete this journey in a historic fashion. I'm mostly sitting somehow on the cart with my weapons and the gear. And uh, yeah, pretty, pretty disappointed that I, I couldn't even do those 350 kilometers. That's not that much, in my opinion. But I think it might have been uh, I might have strained my foot um, while trying out uh, the new Kalige. I could feel that the, the thin sole and all the armor and everything, it was um, also especially my, my way of walking. So it's not the shoes, it's, it's actually my way of walking with those shoes uh, created some instabilities and, and may, may have contributed to the stress in, in, in a smaller bone in the foot, made the stress fracture. So, yeah, I'm continuing the journey. I'm now basically on, on ways and on, on um, uh, places on the Limes where I've, I've walked already before. So all this journey from Treismauer to Tulln I've walked before, all this uh, journey from Tulln to Zeiselmauer and to Kloster Neuburg I've walked before in gear, in armor. And I've also walked from uh, the east of Vienna to here before. Uh, the only stretch that I haven't walked before is from uh, Schwechat to Kanuntum and beyond. And we will see how it goes in one or two days. Um, I will probably not be able to walk for very long, but I, I'll still try to walk uh, a little bit here and there and carry the shield. Yeah, let's see. I hope this there's some uh, something to be learned from that. Um, I don't know what yet but I'll, I'll think about it. Thanks for all the support. Uh, especially a big thank you to Nova Roma, to Tony, and to, to all the great people that supported me on the way and uh, helped me also financially. Um, because, uh, as I said, a lot of the gear here will be um, broken and it was very expensive. And I've really just um, employed the best quality and the most authentically crafted gear. I'll run through that. Next video in order to give some validity to this experiment. Unfortunately, my bones apparently weren't as uh, strong as, I, as they should be. And um, yeah, many, many thanks. Uh, it's not over yet. Uh, we'll continue.
Hacke macht Füße auf die Räder. Die Räder hat er We've arrived in Vindobona. Well, we actually um, are a bit of outside of Vindobona and not too far away from the place where the famous Battle of Aspen took place, where Napoleon lost against Archduke Johann. And um, trying to walk a little bit here now just to see what, what's happening. Uh, it seems like the, my, my foot isn't as uh, inflated anymore as it was the last two days and it's not hurting as much anymore. Yet I still I can't like fully walk but um, I can walk more than yesterday and the day before. And that gives me some hope that there might not be some something broken actually. I mean it was just a di diagnosis um, by a doctor uh, remotely. I just told him the symptoms and what happened and he said oh well. So, Sounds very likely. Um, anyway, I'm quite positive that maybe it's, it's not actually a fracture, but more something like an inflammation of one of the joints or something along the lines. So I'll give it another rest tonight and I'll try with a short episode tomorrow only. We're only going to make it to Fishermend, which was uh, basically the camp of Equinoctium. Uh, half distance between Vindobona and Carnuntum and uh, there we're going to see another veterinary uh, who's gonna have a look at the paw of poor Frida the dog she came under uh, one of the wheels of the uh, cart uh, by accident she was running she's running along it all, all the time without a problem and was always very attentive to it uh, very aware of the horse the cart and, and listening to the commandos uh, but there she had she had a scare because some dogs were barking at her out of a garden and she didn't pay attention for a second and uh, the card rolled over her paw. It's a miracle that it's not broken but she has a flesh wound so it got um, stitched and she's wearing a little shoe now to protect her. She's having uh, similar difficulties walking as I have um, so she was sitting on the card as well uh, but we're gonna have a look again at the vet tomorrow <clears throat> and so it's gonna be a short day going to try to walk some some bits of it we'll see how it goes uh, without armor without all the stuff I'm gonna just walk like this and the next day it's a longer stretch again 
till we make it to Carnuntum. And I'm really looking forward to arriving there. And I'm very disappointed, uh, very unhappy with myself um, that I didn't walk all the way here. Um, even though the transport on the cart, it's, uh, it's very fun, it's very nice. It's a little bit exhausting because I'm sitting in an awkward spot. I'm sitting only half halfway on the cart, having to hold on and one, one leg actually the injured leg is dangling out of the cart and I have to stretch it away a little bit so otherwise it gets into the wheel. Um, but as they say, better to drive badly than to walk nicely. So um, I'm very, very grateful, very thankful to Bert, Henrique, Rufus and, and Frida who literally saved this journey um, and gave my foot some time to rest and some time that we can see what actually happened to it. Uh, I'm more than convinced now by this episode that uh, it's, it's exceedingly optimistic to think that soldiers uh, could walk as intensively as I did um, and, and then have all their equipment, all their armor uh, and, and do 30 kilometer episodes every day. I think you can train to, to be able to do some of that for some time, but I'm really, I think really that it's, it's just something beyond what, um, what is healthy for the body at some point. <laughs>